I'm trying to yeah. put the. the These beautiful young women in spring dresses. So nice. She looks amazing. And I love your necklace the way it's like. Did you glue that on like no, that? No. Um, my friend um, actually agents a bunch of um, jewelers, and this is one of her pieces that mm -hmm. I right. bought from her. It's two hearts. Love it. Yeah, it's, it's so, wonderful. So good. For you and and your loved your loved one. Any loved one out there. <laughs> Anyone who would love to be a loved one. <laughs> you look great. Thanks, sweetie. Uh, welcome back to New York. It's so great to be back yeah. in the city. Of course, you're back in the, the choice time. This is April, you know. Well, yesterday the weather was like unbelievable. Uh, I was walking around in flip flops. Yeah. Everyone was like yeah. in shorts. I know, 86 and degrees oh, yesterday. Yeah. It was warmer here than it was in LA when I left. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? Yeah, and today's like kind of fall weather, which is mm -hmm. nice. So I understand you've got at least three films all backed up and waiting to be released, huh? Yeah, well, there, I shot a lot of independence um, this last year and so like when you shoot an independent film you don't know if it's gonna actually be released so right I've done a, I mean people are like oh is this movie your first movie blah blah, blah. Is actually I've done a lot I just they never made it <laughs> they never made the cut you've done like some enormous blockbusters and then you know the little independence what's the, what are some other differences between well, the two? I think for the independence I don't have to do as much kung fu Right. <laughs> That's the main difference. Like you, you get to do other roles, and like you remember Charlize in Monster? She was so amazing. Right, sure, that. of course. I, I mean, um, you get to do things that you don't normally get to do for for commercial films. So yeah. I did something that we shot in Thailand, which was uh, unbelievable. Um, it was supposed to be originally shoot in China, but they had so many rules and regulations that they said, you know, we'll just shoot it in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And there are actually a whole bunch of um, Chinese people that live up in Thailand. And so when I got there, they're like, oh, they're they like, we're in the mountains. How does, you know, they spoke sure. Chinese, and I spoke Chinese in the movie. So, and, you know, but that has to get distribution. And Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a lot of problems that the public is unaware of, you know, but it takes a long time to get, sometimes, ever to get out there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll send you the Yeah, we'd video. like to see them. <laughs> <laughs> is our guest, and you didn't hear this, of course, but I'm here. There's no way I can avoid things like this, so I'm just minding my own business. When Kelly uh, leans over and says to her, do you retain water? <laughs> I just want to know, because I don't think she ever does. I bet she's never retained water a day in her life. And Lucy said, I don't drink coffee, whatever. <laughs> Something nice has happened to you. You were appointed to be a UNICEF ambassador earlier uh, this week, right? Good for you. Very nice. So what does that entail? Yeah. Where do you have to go? Where do you have to go? Well, I have been um, wanting to work with children for a long time, but I didn't really know what organization I wanted, because there's so many different organizations mm -hmm. you can work with. And so I um, did some research and decided to go to UNICEF. So I was like, UNICEF, <laughs> I'm just wondering if you guys have any, you know, reason to have me be a part of your group and so that like two months later I went to this country called Lesotho which is a country that not many people know about that's surrounded by South Africa mm -hmm. and basically went to look at all the programs and a educate myself so for the last almost year I've been sort of doing that and, and I just felt like it'd be easier for me to know what I'm talking about before they sure. actually appointed me ambassador sure. and so now um, I can sort of spread awareness. So wh what did you find there? Well, I found that the people there are so warm and beautiful and, and loving and they have such a strong sense of community, even though they don't have very much uh, at all. I mean, literally nothing. Um, I mean, mostly the, all of the clothes they were wearing were like completely shredded or complete, almost like nylons that were so thin. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a huge pandemic of AIDS there. Mm. So what's happening in Lesotho, because nobody really knows about it, like they've heard about South Africa and things like that, but Lesotho is basically like um, sort of an invisible emergency. Mm. They call it that, or a silent emergency, where people don't know about it, so they're, they need as much help as they possibly can mm -hmm. get, you know. Mm -hmm. And UNICEF will supply that? UNICEF has, uh, we went to visit like a young farmers group where they um, supplied them with seeds and um, some money to start uh, an agricultural area 
area for the village, which the people in the village come and work for uh, the farm, and they get to have vegetables, and they also sell them, and so it's sort of a group effort, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I went to visit um, uh, orphanages and different, like there's a place called the Good Shepherd's Home where they have um, teenage mothers that are there who are pregnant, and they sort of been, you know, excommunicated from their village and they take them in and they have the child there and then they get them back on their feet and they get them to help them get jobs and mm. so there's so many things that can be done in there and the kids there you know you don't see kids running around in you know in New York or in Los Angeles even when they're little you know because they're usually in carriages or they're being right, helped sure. but as soon as the kids there can walk they are like running around and you know they're on their own yeah. and so you see you will be driving on this very sort of windy road and you'll see like so many kids in groups like this small walking to school um, mm -hmm. and it takes them you know sometimes two to three hours to get to school wow yeah so they all they really want is education like we had a program where we sat down and we asked this classroom like ask any questions that you want and all of the kids just said I'm you know we want to further our education we've you know this is our last year and the next year for high school they have to pay for school Mm -hmm. um, and it's like $500 to pay for school, you, you, know, you know, U.S. money, which is a lot of money. Sure. And so they can't afford it, so they end up working in the fields or, you know what I mean, not furthering education, education in right their there. careers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's so unfortunate, you know. And the thing that I had to remind myself of was not to be reactive, you know, like, not be like, oh, my God, you know, like, you just have to go in there and sort of see the overall you know, view of what you need to do and then sort of come back and then discuss it and sort of sort it out instead of like, because if you try to help one child, like, then you're missing on all, sure. you know right, what I mean? Sure, of course. Yeah, this is part of your job, educating us about what needs to be done over there, right? Educating myself, too. Uh, sure. Lucy Liu. Thanks, Lucy. We'll be right back with some kids ballroom dancing for the knock you out.